My guest today is Lord King, former Governor of the Bank of England. Lord King, welcome. Thank you. I'm delighted to join you, Anne. So what exactly is systemic risk? Well, as the name implies, it's a risk to the system as a whole. A good example would be that we all use electricity for everything. If the electricity supply system were to fail, we'd all be affected. The economy essentially would grind to a halt. It's what happened in the banking crisis just over 10 years ago. People discovered that one or two banks had invested in very risky assets, the value of which had gone down. It didn't seem safe to lend to those banks anymore. But then people asked themselves the question, well, but if it's true of these banks, maybe it's true of all the other banks because they've been following similar business models. And so they decided the sensible thing was to stop lending to any bank. And then the entire banking system was in crisis and had to be rescued by the state. So the the systemic crisis is when it isn't just the impact on an individual, but it affects the system, whether it's the economy or the health system or the financial system as a whole. So that gives us a sense of the, the breadth and the significance of a systemic risk. And what, in your view, are the systemic risks that you think the world is facing now? I think the risk of another pandemic at some future point coming along. I think cybersecurity risks, where there could be risks which would affect the entire economy because we are it's it's the networks between parts of the economy. We're no longer isolated farmers plowing our own field. We're highly integrated connections with each other that drive the economy. And if the support for those systems, the network collapses, then the economy grinds to a halt. So certainly cyber security, pandemics. Uh, There will be other health crises if antibiotics, for example, become resistant to particular bacteria. Then we all have a major problem with that. Would you include climate change as a major systemic risk? Yes, undoubtedly. It's a risk that affects the, the planet as a whole. And I think it's a good example of radical uncertainty because one of the unfortunate aspects about the debate on climate change has been this dispute about whether there is clear scientific evidence that uh, the temperatures are rising by, is it 1.5 or 2.5 or will go up by 4.5? The fact is most of these numbers we don't know, but that isn't a good reason to ignore climate change. We know that the earth is warming uh, and we need to think about therefore how to make our planet more resilient to these outcomes. That suggests adopting a range of measures to handle it, not just one. Um, But there's no doubt that climate change is, in many ways, the ultimate example of a systemic crisis. And if these systemic risks are so variable and so unpredictable, how can we hope to quantify the risk? I think the important thing is to recognise that we can't quantify it and we shouldn't try to. What we can do is to ask intelligent questions about whether we think it's likely or less likely, what the damage would be, to ask questions about what sort of information would it help to have in order to minimise the risk of this happening, to be able to devise resilient policies against it. And I think that is the right right way to approach it. It isn't like tossing a coin. And I think in, in many instances, people, particularly in governments, in order to defend their decisions, have dreamt up numbers to give a sort of pretense. It's bogus quantification. And it's very important to avoid bogus quantification in order to make an intelligent response to a particular potential risk. You've written a book which handles a theme you call radical uncertainty. I'm curious about where that sits if you're looking at systemic risk and at the same time you're being told this uncertainty principle is in your word so radical that it almost sounds like it it pulls against the idea of anything being systemic. No I think what we mean by radical uncertainty is where you cannot quantify in an intelligent way the risks involved because there is no past experience that's a good guide. The world is forever changing That doesn't mean that numbers aren't important. It may well be 
that it would be helpful to study particular aspects of those risks, the things that might occur. Uh, it, and, and I think the, the essence of this is too often people think of risk as divided between something that you can quantify and what they call black swans. That is things that you can't even imagine happening until they've occurred. And the point of our book is to say that most big risks that affect both people in their ordinary lives but also businesses and governments are between those two extremes. They are risks that you can't quantify, but they're risks that we know can occur. We know something about them. COVID-19 has brought a hypothetical systemic risk into sharp reality for businesses and for individuals around the world. So what do we learn from that? Well, COVID-19 is a classic example of radical uncertainty. We knew that there were pandemics, but we couldn't possibly have known that there was some precise numerical probability that there would be this particular pandemic arising at this particular moment. Uh, what we've discovered is that our frameworks were not resilient enough. The, the World Health Organization and other bodies identified the US and the UK as being the two best prepared countries for a pandemic. Well, it turned out they were wrong. Why were they wrong? Because we had prepared very carefully for a flu pandemic, not for a pandemic of an unknown virus. And I think the, the secret here is that we need to recognize that catastrophic outcomes of this kind, which where the world health system is affected, can reflect something that we can't reasonably anticipate easily in precise form. If I were thinking about systemic risk, either as an insurer or uh, as a business wanting to insure myself, I suppose I'd be thinking, is my analysis based on systemic risks in the recent past? Can I learn from them? Or do they just come along in very different guises each time? What should I be looking out for now? Most of the big risks that we face collectively are risks that aren't a repetition of the past. The new things that have come along, the world is not just a repetition of what's gone on in the past. And it's the fact that we are facing unique one-off problems that is the big challenge, both for us as individuals in thinking about how to protect ourselves against those risks, but also for society as a whole to think about how we can provide collective insurance against those adverse outcomes. Lord King, thank you for joining me in conversation. A lot of food for thought there. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure.